know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. The book of Proverbs, chapter number 20. The Bible says in verse 4, The lazy man will not plow because of winter. He will beg during the harvest and have nothing. Verse 6 says, Most men will proclaim each his own goodness. But a faithful man who can find? A faithful man who can find? Winning at work. I have, um, I have been a boss. Um, I still am. Um, but the majority of my business life I did uh, before ministry and at one point I was a captain of about 150 um, in my organization with about 150 employees so I do know a thing or two about being an employer um, and uh, there are certain things that I expected of people who worked under me I hired a lot of people I fired a lot of people um, and I think I am very qualified, if not more than qualified, to stand up here and tell you what your bosses expect from work or what would cause you to be promoted in the workplace. Um, Christians know how to sing songs and hymns, um, but for the most part, they don't know how to conduct themselves in the workplace. And so as a result, people who love God end up getting fired. Not because they are bad people, but simply because they have not been mentored or taught how to behave in the workplace. You have no right to become a boss if you have not been employed by somebody else. That is the most unscriptural thing um, that I've seen. And many people just want to leave school and start business. The devil is a liar. The Bible says he was faithful with what belongs to another man. Based on that faithfulness, God will give him what is his own. And so there's a lot of um, mistakes that people are making in the workplace. And then when things happen, those mistakes turn into prayer points. And they want pastors to pray for them while they're behaving foolishly in the workplace. Hallelujah. And so we want people, children of God, to be promoted in the workplace. Not only because of prayer, but because they have the wisdom that is required the Bible says here in Proverbs 20, the lazy man will not plow because of winter. In winter, many people are lazy. We have many lazy Christians. Many, many lazy Christians. So because kunze kutonora, awuduku shanda. And the Bible says you will beg during the harvest. Laziness will turn you to a beggar. Whether you're an employee or an employer, please write that down. Laziness will turn you into a beggar. I have personally no zero, zero tolerance for lazy people. Lazy people. Neither does God. There's no room for laziness in the kingdom of God. No room. Absolutely no room. I look at when Jesus chose his disciples, he didn't find people who had nothing to do. Jesus took busy people and made them disciples. Not Marova. No one employs you because of your good looks. Unless they just want to bed you. But real genuine employers employ you because you are adding value to that company, not subtracting. When you are in the workplace, are you adding or are you subtracting? You don't deserve a salary if you are subtracting. In your workplace, if you are not producing 
more than what your salary is, you are useless to that boss. If you are not producing as much income as is your salary, you are a liability. The standard for the kingdom is high. That's why the Bible says narrow is the road. There is a reason why there are so few people at the top. It's crowded at the bottom. And the reason why it's crowded is many people are not prepared to do what is required for them to get to the top. Many want the prize but don't want to pay the price. There's a high cost for low living. Money doesn't come by wishing. It comes by working. Can you imagine if money came by wishing how much money you would have by now? You have wished enough. It's time to work. The Bible says a man's gift makes room for him. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. It is not your prayer that will bring you in the presence of greatness. It is you working your gift that will bring you in the, in the presence of greatness. Stop praying about powerful meetings and start working. The powerful meetings will come. The first principle I want to give you about the workplace is maintain your joy in the workplace. Bosses don't like one. People who have a degree in quindiology. Leave your personal problems at home. You don't carry your personal problems to the workplace. You see, we're not going to jump on a promotion because you're having a bad day. That boss wants results. He's not your therapist. Neither is he your pastor. So as a boss, I'm not really interested in your personal problems. I'm interested in my results. You are here to make money for me. When you are working, you are assigned to your boss. Not your boss assigned to you. You are assigned to your boss. And your job is to make as much money as possible for that man. And when you get it twisted, you get fired. Learn to handle pressure in the workplace. The words, I can't take it anymore, should not come from a winner. Promotion only comes to people who can handle pressure. Not people who buckle under pressure. Even if you study in the Bible, the people who achieved great things, achieved great things despite the pressure they were under. So no matter how much pressure you are under, learn to handle pressure. It's a key to greatness. Pain is the proof that some laws have been broken. Pain is proof that some laws have been broken. If you are experiencing poverty pain, you have broken some sowing laws. If you are experiencing marital problems, you have broken some marital laws. Pain is proof that some laws have been broken. You need to learn the principle of timing. You need to know the right time to bring up your issue. Don't bring up your issue when your boss has got issues. Bring up the issue of your pay increment after you've just closed a big deal from your boss. That day, there's a, 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 an issue, a cash flow. That's the day you choose to bring up your financial issues. 
Ie hausu na dapa na marere. Besides, ukuta mbere marere kwa wali sa yewe. In fact, you actually reduce your salary to solve his problem. Serve clients well. They might be your next boss. Some jobs are not acquired through CV people or whoever those agents are these days. I don't know who they are anymore. You can get a job while you are on your job serving a customer well. Bosses promote employees who go outside of their normal call of duty. There are people who work one past five your brain ceases to work. Chirongoro pagadpe kunyora sentence pa computer unotomira ngo wadzakwana If you were your boss apart from your financial needs would you promote you You don't get an increment just because it's July money does not grow on trees neither does it come because you prayed You have to make the money If we want to get paid more money let's make more money If the client you serve well doesn't give you a job he will recommend you to your boss how are you serving clients the rules to get into your past are different from the rules to get into your present and they are different from the rules to get into your future what got you into the prison joseph will not bring you to the palace so there are rules that will take you to the palace joseph was required to shave to go and meet pharaoh in the palace but to get into the prison there were no such qualifications Are you qualified to get into your future or do you just want to get in? Some of you your dressing needs to change and I'm not talking about new things. I'm talking about matching the ones the old ones. I'm talking about cleaning the old shoes you have. When I see a person with unpolished shoes in my mind there's one word that rings in my mind. Unseriousness. In fact, I cannot I can no longer even hear what you are saying. With men I look at your shoes. With women I look at your hair. How presentable are you in your workplace? Yes you are praying. Yes you are fasting. But ukuthatsa ukupinda ne hairstyle. Does your hairstyle qualify in the environment that you want to enter into? Yes you have dreadlocks. But dreadlocks will not get you a job in financial institutions. Listen to me. Some of you you are dressing you are dressed like a suspect. So so you need to change the way you are dressed so you can enter into that environment. You cannot have a millionaire to entrust you. Are you hearing me? With his business, with his money, with his car while you're wearing a jean and tackies. You can't sign a multi million dollar deal wakafeka chikabudura. No one pays you to answer your phone except for your boss. If you want to be promoted in the workplace, solve problems in the workplace. You are promoted for the problems you solve, not the problems you cause. Solving problems brings favor. Favor brings money. No one has been promoted in the workplace because they are such a prayer warrior. In fact, I know people who have been fired in the workplace because all they are doing is praying during work. Your boss did not hire you as a prayer contractor. You want promotion in the workplace? You want promotion in the business realm. A powerful principle. Can I give it to you? Honor. And that's a principle that today's generation doesn't understand. Learn to honor. When you honor people, automatically they give you favor. People you honor open doors for you. People you dishonor close doors. Despite having a good product at a good price, dishonor has disqualified you. People you fail to honor who always cause you not to be promoted there are many people who are good at their jobs but they are kept on the same level but by people because of dishonor how do i know your boss hears how you are speaking about him in his absence in a dishonoring way so he says i won't promote this one do not involve yourself in negative discussions about superior people Pastors and bosses are like because you need those people when you arrive at work after your boss that is dishonor make your boss miss you when you go how do you know if you are effective or not is there an impact on that organization when you are not at work when you are off sick 
Proof of honor is in obedience of instructions. So if you honor me, it is seen in you obeying the instruction I've given you. Now, if you cannot honor your pastor, a man who talks to God or with God about you, how much more will you dishonor a boss? I can tell that you don't listen to your boss because you don't listen to me. You don't honor your boss because he's nice. You honor him because of his position. Because he is your boss. God has put him as your boss, as a ruler over you. So you honor him because of that. Women, you want your husband to respect you. Keep respecting him while he's disrespecting you. And you force him to respect you. Look at this. First Samuel. Chapter number 18. Read for me from verse 5. Verse 5. Uh-huh. So David went out wherever Saul sent him. Listen, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Okay. David had already killed Goliath. That event of killing Goliath is only an entry point into the palace. You can't keep referring to it. Stop reminding your boss of good things you did in the past. The past is over. So David was now in the presence of Saul. Because he killed Goliath, he was invited into the palace. Are you hearing me? Then Am Palace, Hans Israel, David went wherever Saul sent him. There are Christians who are not my boss. So they use their past victory as a point of reference. So you can be fired despite having killed Goliath. Verse 5. Uh-huh. So David went out wherever Saul sent him uh-huh. and behaved wisely. Behaved wisely. Behaved wisely. Don't behave foolishly, Kubasa. I'm going to quit at Chikudo, Kubasa. No, no, can you imagine? Someone has a fight, Kubasa. A physical fight, Kubasa. That's not wise behavior. Cheroka, boy, can I say, Kubasa? Never have an argument, Kubasa. Do you know how many people have given away a piece of their mind? I'll give you a piece of my mind. You will keep giving away a piece of your mind until there's nothing left. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Learn to control your anger in the workplace. Many people, because of failure to handle anger, fire themselves from a job. Because Behave wisely in the workplace. See Gapabaza. That is not behaving wisely. Wearing a miniskirt to work is not behaving wisely. Because there are people who cannot control themselves. Avoid romantic relationships in the workplace. I'm not even talking about bosses here. I'm talking about someone on the same level. Hello? Let me give you a scenario. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, no problem. Let me disqualify that. basement. He's single, he's single, no problem. But most of Ramban and Didi, you're on the same level. Hello? Makupanana attitude. So now, you are not going to work to work. You are going to show him. So your focus is now no longer on the job. Your focus is on showing him. So you've lost focus on your job. Your performance begins to go down. Two years later, the guy who you were on the same level with is now promoted. Still nursing the broken heart and is now ruler over you. How long will you last on that job? Which brings me to this issue. If you compromise to get a job, carpet interview, you have to compromise to keep it. If you compromise to get the job, 
you compromise to keep it. You will sleep with you. Push you aside. Have more interviews. The company is growing. New, new people will come. New level. Now you are coming for prayer. Over something that you created. Behave wisely. If you have to compromise to get a job, you don't need that job. God has a better job for you. I'm telling you the truth. Listen to me. Don't expect your emotional problems to be solved at work. Okay? Know why you're going to work. You're not going there to look for affection. Affection is found at home. Don't let your personal weakness destroy your career. Negotiate the best possible package in the workplace. Many people are afraid to negotiate. And like I said, do it after you've produced results. Increment doesn't come because we're garababas. Increment comes because you are causing positive changes, increase in that company. No boss doesn't like somebody who's bringing an increase in that company. You see, it's called the law of compensation. Because you are only rewarded for the problems you solve. Financial rewards, they, they, are, they are determined by how much you are bringing into the organization. Yeah, if you are solving $2 problems, then you are paid $2. Solve higher problems. Solve bigger problems. And your boss has no choice but to promote you. So the problems you solve is what determines your salary. Not your certificate. You want us to pay you because you went to the university. And to what end? They don't pay you because you went to the university. They pay you because you learned something at the university which you are applying and is giving an advantage to the organization. There are people who are under the illusion that the more degrees they have behind their name, the more they are supposed to be paid. No. You are not paid because of a degree. You are paid because you produce results. Listen to me. There are many, many people in degree No one is paying them. That are in mental institutions. No one is paying them. Because those degrees are not producing results. Listen to me. This world is results orientated. Let me tell you something about education. Do you know by the time you finish the course you are doing, it's obsolete. Now, go and check it. <laughs> Listen, you can't apply for a job as a sex educator and do Windows 1, Windows 2. Who's dealing with Windows 1 and 2? Look, no, Shansa Pastel. The devil is a liar. People want results. 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 Not certificates, results. What can you add to this organization? And don't tell us about papers. My paper, they would want an interview. <laughs> Write this down. Do your job well all the time. Do your job well all the time. Give your boss feedback before he asks for it. That's wisdom there. If your boss has to follow you up, you are not serious. Make it hard for your boss to replace you. I tell you, there's a guy who works at my house and cleans my cars. Hey, I've now engaged in praying for that guy to live long. I'm telling you, he's hard to replace. He knows exactly what I want. He has a good attitude. He has never woken up with a bad attitude. Never. Many people, your attitude leaves a lot to be desired. But attitude, I wish women knew this. Let me tell you the secret, women. A man will marry a woman who's half as good looking as you if she has a better attitude than you. What's your attitude? Your attitude determines your altitude. 
you will never climb in life higher than your attitude. No one has to spend time, with, time around you because of your attitude. Ask for more work from your boss. Ask your boss for more work. You are announcing to him that I'm so efficient. I have finished my assignment. Do you have more for me? And when it's time to be promoted, guess who is going to promote? It's going to be you over the other lazy people that are in your department. There must be a clear difference between you and your peers. Don't work according to where you are. Work according to where you are going. So the Bible says all that you do, do it with all of your heart. Ask your boss for more work. Don't keep putting your assignment off. Your boss gives you an assignment. and You keep putting it off. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Let me tell you, he's going to ask you for it before you have done it. Actually, And you know when there will be pressure? When your immediate boss, I think let me, say, let me stand here when I say this one. When your immediate boss comes to you because of an assignment that you are supposed to have done and you have not done it. And he, your immediate boss, was supposed to hand that assignment to his boss. Then now he says, Saka, you don't think so, boss. And he'll tell you something like, I want to know, Procrastination is the mother of poverty. Don't hold your gift back at work. Don't hold your gift back. In other words, put in all that you have. Put in everything. Don't let your environment get into you. You can change your environment. Like the example of the boat on the water. As long as the boat is on the water, there's no problem. Once the water gets into the boat, then the boat begins to sink. We know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal.